So now we're going to go back through and look at a reaction's overall ability to give off energy while it goes forward. And with that, we had talked about thermodynamics previously when we talked about enthalpy or delta H, that when a reaction gives off energy, it's called exothermic. When it gains energy, it's called endothermic. And in general, exothermic reactions tend to be favorable. You're going to a lower energy state, you're giving off energy, and that tends to be favorable. But overall, there's another piece to that equation that we need to apply in order to say, does a reaction truly give off energy? So before we get into that, we need to define uh, spontaneity. And spontaneity means that uh, the, rea the reaction tends to give off energy. So a spontaneous process means that once I start it, I don't need to keep applying external action to it to make the process continue. So for a reaction, once I start the reaction, it tends to go on to completion. And a prime example of this is rolling a car down a hill. Once I give it a push, once I you know, apply the external action, the car will roll down to the bottom all on its own. I don't need to keep pushing the car. And likewise, the opposite, a non-spontaneous process means, you know, it doesn't mean I, it won't happen, but it means I need to make it happen. I need to continually apply an external action. So this is very much like pushing a car up a hill. I can get the car up the hill, but I need to push it the whole way. And at any point I stop pushing the car, the car will stop going up the hill. So that's kind of the idea of, between a spontaneous and non-spontaneous process. And, you know, and I want to make a, a point that just because we say a process is non-spontaneous, it doesn't mean that it will not happen. It just means we need to make it happen. So these um, reactions that we're going to be talking about, spontaneous and non-spontaneous, that we had talked about equilibrium. So a lot of the time there is a forward and a reverse reaction, and that if one reaction, say the forward reaction is spontaneous, then the reverse reaction will be non-spontaneous. So, you know, once again, like rolling a car down the hill or pushing the car up the hill, those are kind of like an equilibrium, one going one way, one going the other, one spontaneous, the other is going to be non-spontaneous. So reactions themselves, and so we, you know, this is chemistry, and so we're gonna apply this idea. Is a reaction spontaneous or non-spontaneous? What are some of the ways that we can look at that? What are, the, what are some of the ways that we can calculate whether this is true or not? And we need to apply another piece. So we talked about uh, enthalpy. So, and it was originally thought that if in a reaction gave off heat, that the reaction was going to be spontaneous and then we're going to provide some evidence that shows that this isn't the complete story that we need to apply another piece to it and part of that reason is is sometimes there's spontaneous endothermic reaction so a reaction absorbs heat and it is spontaneous so this means that spontaneity the overall idea of you know is a reaction gaining or losing heat is not entirely determined by enthalpy, delta H. So there's another piece to it. And a prime example of this is ice melting at room temperature. So if I put a piece of ice on a table, it will spontaneously melt. But in order to melt ice, I need to put energy into it. So this is an endothermic uh, reaction, but it is also spontaneous. So there is more to the story. So there's more to the energy of a reaction. And that's what we're going to talk about now.